Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to look at a comprehensive example dealing with pension. So at this point, if you don't understand how pension works, the various component of pension expense, how the PBO work, by all means, go to farhatlectures.com, view the prior recording. So this basically, this example will illustrate all the concepts that you have learned in this chapter. So if you, if you get follow with this example, then you are good to go, I would say, when it comes to accounting for pension. So let's take a look at the data that we are giving. So we are giving three-year data for Jackson Company. Jackson Company uh, adopted an acceptable accounting for its defined ben benefit pension on January 1st, 2016 with the following beginning balances. They immediately put 200,000 away uh, in their plan asset and they believe they will have a PBO as of today, $250,000. So this is what they start with. Simply, simply put, they started with a underfunded plan of 50,000, okay? In 2016, they have, they have, we have three years, 2016, 2017, and 2018. In 2016, the annual service cost was 16,000. The settlement rate and the expected return is 10%. Actual return on the plan asset is only 18,000. Annual, annual funding contribution, we wrote a check to the plan administrator for 16,000 and the company paid benefit of 14,000. This is 2016. So let's work with 2016. So notice we're going to start with 2016. And if you know anything about this example, it looks like straightforward, this example 2016, then we're going to be adding a little bit more in 2017, more complication, a little bit more in 2018. So let's start with this simple year 2016. 2016, we started with again, where they have a pension liability of 50,000 at the beginning of the year. Why? Because when we started the plan, we immediately put away 200,000, but our obligation was to 50. Then the employee worked the year, work one, one additional year for us. Therefore, we have an increase in pension expense, an increase in PBO of 16,000. Interest on the liability, which is how do you come up with 25,000? We said the settlement rate is 10%, 250 times 10%. So this is going to also increase the PBO. Our return on asset a return, the expected return is 20,000. Why 20,000? It's, it's the plan asset times the expected return. But we only returned 18,000. Well, we thought we're going to get, we thought we're going to get 20,000. We expected to get at least 20,000. Let's make, put it this way. That, that was the expected. The actual was only 18. It means we're going to have to put an additional 2,000 because we, we always use the expected. But we're going to do, what we're going to do with that remaining 2,000, that's going to be a loss in OCI. Simply put, now we have a loss in OCI, an expected loss of 2,000. And again, a loss in OCI is a debit. Loss in OCI is a debit. So we debit OCI 2,000, simply put for that. Contribution, this is the check that we wrote. So our cash goes down and our plan asset goes up because we submitted a payment to the, uh, to the plan asset. And we paid 14,000, therefore we have less PBO and less plan assets. So we pay our retirees for, we did, we did not really pay them, the administrator paid them. So let's first take a look at the balance in PBO. The balance, the first thing you wanna do is compute the balance in PBO. The balance is 277,000, which is starting with 250 plus 16 plus 25 minus 14. And the plan asset is 220,000. So we are still underfunded by 55,000. So our liability will be under, our liability will be 57,000. Therefore, if we started with 50 and we need to get to 57,000, it means we have to credit, because this is the journal entry, we have to credit pension liability 7,000. We add up all our expense, so our pension expense is 21,000. Cash is credit 16. And here we debit, because it's a loss, because we incurred the loss. We debit OCI 2,000, and obviously we credit the liability 2,000. So let's take a look at the journal entry. The pension expense is the total of the pension expense. OCI is a debit of 2,000 because we have an unexpected loss. And the pension liability is 7,000. How do we come up with the 7,000? Once again, I started with a pension liability of 50,000. I needed 57. What I'm missing is seven. And I paid $16,000 in cash. Always make sure your debits and your credits are equal which is they are equal to each other. So this was 2016. Now bear in mind, so when you start 2017, when you start 2017, this is what you are. When you start 2017, this is what you are starting with. You are starting with a pension liability of 57,000, PBO of 227, and plan asset of 220. 
So now we are gonna, we're going to be working with 2017 data. Okay, 2017 data. Let's review the 20, 2017 data. Annual service cost of 19. Again, the settlement rate and the expected return is 10%. The actual return was 22. The annual funding, we're going to write a check for 40,000. We're going to pay our employees 16,400. But in 2017, we amended the plan. We amended the plan. And as a result, now we have a prior service cost of 160,000. Why? We just we amended the plan. What does amending the plan means? It means we decided to give additional benefit to our employees and as a result our obligation went up by 160 and amortization of prior service cost of 54,000 so we're going to amortize out of this 160 54,400 just they just gave us this amount we don't worry about how we came up with it so let's start 2017 worksheet again 2017 we are starting with 57 of pension liability 277 of PBO and 220 of plan asset. Now, also, we are starting with a debit balance of 2000 in, in the OCI because OCI, this OCI, just want to make sure I you know this, it's a balance sheet account. So OCI is a balance sheet account, and we're starting with a $2,000 debit balance. The first thing we do, we're going to we're gonna add our PBO. I'm not, add to the PBO the prior service cost. Remember, we amended the plan. It's going to hit our PBO. It's not going to hit our expense. Okay, 160,000, and we're going to put 160,000 in PC in prior service cost. Now that's going to give us the balance, adjusted balance as of the beginning of the year. Then we're going to add the service cost. The service cost for this year was 19,000. Interest on the obligation is 437,000. How uh, 43,700. How do you come up with this? It's your PBO, including prior service cost, times 10% gives me 43,700 return on asset is 22,000 and guess what happened here guess what happened here this year return on asset was 22,000 well if I take how do I come up with the expected return I'll take my plan asset to let's take this one 220 and I multiply it by 10 percent if I do so I'll get 22,000 and my actual return was 22,000 it's very unusual that this happens but this is to simplify things so the return on asset was 22,000 which is equal to the actual return that's fine then we amortize out of this 160 they're telling us you are going to expense 54,400 again how did you come up with this you just told us this number so we're going to amortize this amount so we're going to add it to our pension expense and reduce it from P prior service cost notice we're going to be reducing it from the 160 okay then the contribution we contributed for forty thousand dollars so we wrote a check for forty thousand reduce cash and increase the plan asset by forty thousand okay then we paid sixteen thousand four hundred that's not on our record that's on the on the uh on the administrator record so the first thing you do once again the first thing you should do is add up what happened to what's your pbo your PBO is 483,300. Your plan asset is 265,600. So you should have a liability of 217,700. You should have a liability of 217,700. Well, you started your liability with 57,000. You started with liability with 57,000 and you need to have 217,700 now because your PBO is greater than your plan asset by 217700 therefore the first entry is you need a credit of 16700 for the pension liability then what we do is you just go through the um, go through the figures and you have to find out what else do you need to do you have to debit pension expense this is a debit to pension expense 95100 you credit you credit cash cash is credit cash is credit cash is credit for the amount that you paid which is 40,000 and the prior service cost you started with 160 you reduced it by 54,400 and this is your first year therefore you're going to have a prior service cost 105,600 and since you did not have any basically a beginning balance there is no beginning balance in prior service cost just hit the just the entry will be debit to prior service cost of 105,600 to do what to start the balance 105,600 and for the gain and losses nothing really happened so there is we don't we there's no entry for the gain and loss we still have 2000 so your entry will consist of the pension expense other comprehensive income again how do you come up with the other comprehensive income figure well we started with 160 then we amortized 54 400 
So basically, our balance should be 105,600. Why the balance should be that much? Because we did not have a beginning balance. So just, just hit OCI, debit OCI 105,600 to establish the balance. Now, this balance will stay with us for next year because now it's established. Again, the pension liability, how they come up with this 16700 Again, your goal was to have 217700 as a PBO, and you started with 57000 Therefore, what you were missing is a credit of 16700 and it's 16700 And you paid cash 40000 So this is the entry for 2017. Now, now remember what's going to be with you for next year, what you're going to be starting with, which is, so you make sure you know this, when you start next year, which is 20. 2019 you're gonna you're gonna have you're gonna have a PBO of 483 300 a PA of 265 600 this is the PA you're gonna have pension liability of 217 700 a gain a loss actually not a gain a loss of 2000 and a prior service cost a debit balance of 10 105 600 why because it's a loss okay now let's take a look at 2019 data and 2019 i'm sorry 2018 not 2019 your annual service cost is 26 your settlement rate is still 10 percent your actual return was 24,000. your annual funding is 48 you paid benefit of 21,000. and amortization of prior service cost is 41,600. so you're going to be amortizing 41,600. and there's a change change in actuarial assumption december 31st PBO. So at the end of the year, by the time we got to the end of the year, the actuary came and he said, look, your PBO now is, doesn't matter what you are thinking, your PBO should be 520,000. You guys remember, the actuary can do this. The actuary can tell us your plan now has changed. So simply put, your PBO at the end of the year is 520. So you know your how much your ending PBO is. If it doesn't come, come up to that, you have to plug that figure. You have to plug that figure and we're going to see how. So this is something new. We're going to be working with this example. Okay. This is something new. So let's go ahead and so those are beginning balances, prior service cost, a loss of 2000. Those are both debit. We have a credit and the liability and this is the PBO and this is the PA. Service cost was 26000 Debit, I'm sorry, uh, put it under pension expense and put it under PBO. Interest cost is for 48330 which is the PBO times 10%. Your return on asset um, is 24,000. And uh, what's your return on asset? It should be how much? It should it should have been, let me see. It should have been, it, two, let me just, 265, 600 times 10%. It should have been 26,560. Uh, so notice you only earned 24,000. Your actual return was 24, but you should have earned 26,560. Again, you have an unexpected loss, another debit to OCI of 2,560. So I want you to kind of follow this OCI. Let's see. This is your OCI. You started with 2,000. Now you're going to hit OCI by 2,560. Okay. Uh, amortization of prior service cost. Uh, 41,600. So again, we're going to reduce this amount by 41,600. As we reduced it, it's going to hit the pension expense because now we're amortizing that prior service cost. Contribution, we made a contribution of 48,000. We're going to reduce our cash and increase our planned asset. And the administrator paid 21,000 to our retiree. That's going to reduce our PBO and reduce our planned asset. Now, here's what's going to happen. We're pretty much done with everything. Here's what we do at this point. We need to have a balance of 520,000. Hold on a second. How do you know it's going to be 520,000? The actuary told us your balance should be 520. So when I add up all these, when I add up my PBO column, now I'm working with the PBO column. I'm working with this column here. I'm working with this column here. And I'm going to go ahead and add these figures to see how much do they add up to. So let me go ahead, use my calculator, and add up these figures. So I'm going to take 483, 483,000. 300 plus 26,000 plus 48, 330 minus 21,000. That's equal to all these numbers together. All these numbers together. Okay, let me just hide this. All these numbers together are equal to all these numbers together. 536,630. Hold on a second. And you're telling me my, 
based on my computation, my liability should be 536, 630, and my actuary said no, that's way too high. Your 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 balance should be 520. What does that mean? It means I made a gain immediately. I have less liability of how much the difference. The difference is 16,630. So I have to reduce my PBO, basically have a plus to the PBO of 16,630. Where does that go? It's a gain in my PBO. Remember, any changes in actuarial uh, assumption hits the gain and the losses. Now what's going to happen is now I have a gain of 16,630, which is a credit to OCI. Simply put, simply put, this was the beginning balance. This was the beginning balance. This was, uh, yeah, this was the beginning balance. So we credit the balance 16,630. We credited 16,630. We debited 2560. Therefore, the entry and under for the gain is 14,070. Okay, but let's keep on going. Let's keep on going here. Okay, so what I did is I added all my PBO. It doesn't matter what I added up to. I have to make it 520. The plan asset is 316,600. Therefore, I have to have a liability of 203,400. I have to have a liability of 203,400. My beginning liability is 217. Well, excellent news. My liability went down. My liability used to be, um, used to be 217,700. My liability went down to 203, to 203. What does that mean? It means this year, it's a, it's a, good, it's a good year for the company because I'm going to be debiting my liability. I'm going to be debiting my liability for 14,000. 300 notice this is a debit why because my liability went down so this is my debit and my credit to OCI is 14,470 this is my uh, debit uh, this is a credit because I'm amortizing a loss it's credit I'm removing the loss I'm reducing the loss this is credit to cash of 48,000 and my annual pension expense is 89,370 so let's take a look at this my journal entry my journal entry will consist of my pension expense my pension asset now my pension asset is 14,300 why is it an asset and in the, in the prior two years what's a liability because in the prior two years my liability was going up therefore I needed to credit my liability this year it went down and it went down again from 217,700 let me just do it one more time I know I'm repeating myself it went from 217,700 to 203,400 which is good that's why I debited my it's called now pension asset my other comprehensive income, I amortized 14,700 from other comprehensive income. Um, this is for the, uh, what was that for? That was for the uh, actuarial uh, actuarial uh, gain and uh, expected losses. So remember, I have loss, I have losses of 2,560 because my, my asset did not perform well. So I had expected losses. Then here comes my gain of 16,000. Uh, my gain was 16,000 from the uh, from the actuarial uh, from the actuarial gain 16,630. You net these out and they equal to 14,070, which is a credit. It means my it's a gain. It's a gain. Then other comprehensive income. I amortized 41,600 from my prior service cost 41,600, and obviously my cash. Always add up your debit, add up your credit. So this is your journal entry. Now, what's going to happen when you start 2019? When you start 2019, remember when you start 2019, I want to make sure you know what your balances are. When you start 2019, you're going to have 64,000 in your prior service cost. Why 64,000? You started with 105, 600, then you reduced it by 41,600. So your balance is 60, 64,000. 64,000 your OCI it's going to be a gain of 12,000 let me just change the color here your OCI will be a gain of 12,000 and 70 12,000 and 70 why again just follow my T account analysis and you will see that you started with 2,000 then you increased it by you increase it by 2560 you increase the debit then you reduce it by 16630 therefore your balance is 12070 which is your balance right here your balance right here and your pension liability will be 203400 and your pbo 520 and your plan asset 316600 so next year obviously you're going to have to amortize some of this 64000 
no one knows what's going to happen to this 12,070. It may go up, it may go down. Then you have to figure out what's going to happen to your PPO and plan asset. But this is a good com comprehensive example. That if you can follow this example, because this example involved both prior service cost, it involved actuarial gains and losses, which is the losses were for the un unexpected losses on our plan asset, and the gains were the unexpected gain on the PBO. Suddenly, our, our, our actuary told us, well, guess what? You owe less. You're going to owe less money. So if you could follow this example, I think you're going to be good for this chapter, which is the pension, a very important topic that's covered on the CPA exam. If you have any questions, any comments, by all means, email me or see me in class.